What's up guys, it's Eric Johnson from Airtate Throws Nation. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how do we connect the start to the finish, the middle of the throw. It's one of the biggest, most challenging, frustrating things to learn because it's unnatural. And we're gonna talk about a drill to help you fix it in this video, so check it out. Hey, what's up guys, it's Eric Johnson, and in today's video, as I mentioned, if you're struggling with the middle of your throw, putting together your full throw tends to be that difficult point. How are we able to consistently help new throwers go from no full throw to a full throw in 75 to 90 minutes? We do that with regularity because we break down the movement and we identify specifically the missing variables. We had over 500 athletes attend our Throwing Chain Reaction Summer Throws Camps. One of the biggest things that we saw where everybody's wheels fall off is the simple part of connecting the beginning of the throw, the start, to the finish. So the start is pillar one, two, the finish is pillar five, six. So it's that pillar three, four connection where we tend to see the biggest challenge. So what is that? So if you look at me here and you watch me come through and you see me come into this position, so it's this part right here where I'm coming from this point this part here where I'm gonna feel that and see how I'm gonna be stacked up and moving into the throw. So one of the biggest things that we run into is that you know a lot of athletes will stay on a stand throw because you can get away with holding the discus in cor correctly because you're just gonna put the discus back and you're gonna be able to sling it. But if you're holding that discus incorrectly and you're moving through here, now you start to get a whole bunch of things because at this point, if you have the disc is low and you have the high point off, you're gonna still be able to shift forward and throw it. And some athletes can get an okay sling. Now there's a whole bunch of different technical things, right? We have to learn how to actually rotate the hips through, how to stretch that discus way out to get it here. If we're rotating in the shot, we gotta rotate that hip through to get everything through here so we can punch and extend out over the toe board and not be pulling away. Way, the biggest issue that you're going to run into with the transition in either event is going to have a big deal to do with how you're holding it. And that's actually not what I'm going to talk about. What I'm going to teach you right now though is a drill that's going to teach you how to decelerate your upper body and how to move your lower body ahead. Now a big thing that we constantly educate our coaches and our throwers and how we're helping them get through these sticking points where they're stuck, where the technique just develops super slow, is that we're showing how do you do a drill. If you line up, and a lot of people like to load up this, and I understand the logic, but what we're trying to do is help you think about how do you train the throw differently and how do you improve faster through better mechanics. When you're here, and a lot of people teach to stay in this position, this tends to help you engage the block because you're shifting. So you see athletes, they get here, they get forward, and then maybe they wrap and they're trying to do this and they're trying to stay back and they're trying to prevent from shifting. So if I'm holding the discus, one of the things that I'm gonna to wanna to do is I wanna have that discus back, I wanna have the chest turned, and we talk about a simple alignment point, hips between the feet. If you're loaded up on the right and you just turn to go down, which I understand it does help you turn. Now, what you tend to see with a lot of kids is that they do this and they turn the upper body, the knee goes this way, and this is actually what I think that makes an athlete prone to do. So it's a preference thing, but I have found time and time again with athletes that come in, this aspect is getting missed by a lot of youth and developing coaches, and I have yet to seen any high level post collegiates that have come in to train with me, they're actually doing this efficiently and it's benefiting them. So what you wanna do is you wanna start with the hips back. So we talk about that, we have a couple of key alignment points and this is again, we talk about extensively. Set up alignment, set up the chain reaction. Remember, we wanna always address what's happening prior to getting to the position, right? We wanna address the technical cause of issues. So we are gonna be training positions and we're going to be training movement. So we have to set alignment. When we set here, look where the knee is, look at the flexion. Where would the knee be turning to that position? It would turn to that position in the air in typically the shot or the discus. Especially in the discus, I'm going to be turning and I'm going to be here. That's when you're going to see that knee flexion. So if I start here, I'm doing an exaggerated turn and I get that that can make me turn, right? I just did the drill, but what do we want to do? We want to set here. We're 
we're going to think about moving, pushing off of the back leg, the sprint leg, like you would in a throw. We're going to keep the alignment right. We're going to keep the chest down the, what would be the implement side throwing sector. So if you're right-handed, the right sector. If you were left-handed, feet would be switched and my chest would be facing the left sector. So I'm going to be here. My hips are going to be between. I'm going to be able to push and I'm going to squat and you're going to see how that's going to create better rotation and now I'm going to be able to get that hip through and really pull that discus, which is what you want. Remember, the up motion is going to cause tons of problems. If you're doing that one, don't do that, and we'll do that on another video. So again, do it along with me. You're going to set up. You want to put your knee on top of your ankle, and you want to put this knee below and hanging under your hip. You're going to turn your chest down what would be your right sector line. You're going to keep your discus about rib height, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be back, I'm going to be long, and I'm not going to move the upper body. I'm going to push off the sprint leg, and I'm going to immediately squat and turn simultaneously. I'm keeping that long. So notice where my chest ended up. Notice where my lower body ended up. This is going to help me feel that stretch and load and turn my hip and feel that nice long pull. In the shot, how do we work the squat and turn? We have a different wrapping action, which we'll talk about in a different video. But we're going to be here, hips between, knee on top of the back of the ankle, this knee underneath the hip, chest down the right sector, arm open though, not the, not the arm here, because we're going to have a different wrap in how we counterbalance in the middle and the shot is different. But what we're going to do is, again is push, squat and turn, and you're going to see how I'm in this position and I'm going to be able to come in and I'm going to be able to punch. So let's try that one last time. Make sure you set up the right position. A lot of times developing throwers set their feet wrong. You start at the back of the circle. You kind of, we do what we call as our hinge. We're going to move here and we're going to step down. That's part of that. That's all a sequence that we teach inside the, the program. So when you're setting here, chest here, again, knee on the back part of the ankle, this knee underneath the hip, hips between the feet, and now don't move the upper body, all leg action. See how I'm on balance, upper body stays back, this is going to move ahead, and I'm going to feel that nice, big, striking, long, nasty pull, which is going to add big distance, which is what you want. If you're shifting, you're always going to go early, and if you get that upper body in, you lose the radius, you lose the speed, you lose the stretch, you lose a lot of distance. In the shot, again, we have that different wrap point. So set it up, the knee over the top of the back of the ankle, this knee underneath the hip, shoulders facing down the right sector, open it up. We're moving the lower body and that's going to move the upper body. We're going to push, we're going to squat and turn, and you're going to see me how I'm going to come here. The wrap and open, and now I'm going to be able to turn through, boom, and create that nice strike, which is going to extend me over the board. So hopefully you like today's follow along. This is called the squat and turn drill. We talked about a number of different things, but remember, throwing is a system. It's a sequence of event. You have to understand that the throw happens in sequential order. Most problems are not problems that are created in the position, although there are times where the movement pattern isn't right or the positions aren't really very good, but typically what's creating is the sequence of events, i.e. your chain reaction that's leading up to the problem, that's what's going to cause the problem. The getting that transition of connecting pillar one, two, the start, to the middle, pillar three, four, to the finish, pillar five, six, that three, four connection, that movement and transition where you're at the end of three through four into the start of five, that's the piece where everything gets screwed up. So remember, the, how you hold that discus, how you hold that shot put, arm position, hand position, all these things are variables that are gonna influence that transition. That's what makes this so tough. So once you have that right, but the actual movement itself that you train, setting up. If you're always setting forward, you're gonna tend to shift. You're gonna tend to learn wrong in your, and you're creating a pattern. Remember, you wanna learn something right the first time because it takes so many more reps to undo it. And once you have a pattern set, it's a real nightmare to change it. That's why learning the right things the first time are super critical to making big improvements fast. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit all that. We call it the thrillification. Click the bell and don't forget, if you'd like more information, Check out our links below for free courses, master classes, things that will help get you started, and of course, our Airtay Strength and Airtay Throws Nation programs. See you on the next video.